Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. In today's video, we'll be going over a few greatest common factor word problems. This is a viewer requested video. As always, I encourage you to leave your requests down in the comments. With that said, let's get into our first problem. So here it is, straight from the comments. My father is 40 and my grandfather is 72. I'm two years older than twice the greatest common factor of my father and grandfather's ages. So how old am I? Well, I tell you how old I am right here. I'm two years older than twice the greatest common factor of my father and grandfather's ages. So let's write this down. This is my age. We start off with I am two years older than. So we can write two plus. There's going to be something else over here. Whatever it is, I'm two years older than that. So we can start off with two plus. So what am I two years older than? Well, I go on to say I'm two years older than twice the greatest common factor of my father and grandfather's ages. So twice means two times, and then we have the greatest common factor of my father and grandfather's ages. That's the greatest common factor of 40 and 72. So let's break this down one more time. I'm two years older than, that's this two plus, two years older than something, twice the greatest common factor of my father and grandfather's ages, that's right here, two times the greatest common factor of my father and grandfather's ages. All right, so now we just have to do this computation. So let's find the greatest common factor of 40 and 72. In order to do that, we'll use prime factorizations, but in order to find the prime factorizations of 40 and 72, we'll need to make some factor trees. So let's get to it. We'll start off with 40. And of course, you can start off your factor tree with whatever factors come to mind. The first factor that comes to my mind is 10, which I know we can multiply by 4 to get 40. So we've broken 40 down into 10 times 4. Then 10, I know we can break down into 5 times 2, and these are prime numbers, so we're done there. We just have to factor the 4. 4 can be factored into 2 times 2, and these are also prime numbers, so now we're done. The prime factorization of 40 is 5 times 2 times 2 times 2. Then moving on, we need to find the prime factorization of 72. If you remember your multiplication facts well, you might recognize 72 as the eighth multiple of 9. So 9 times 8 is 72. So we can factor 72 into 9 times 8. With that said, knowing your multiplication facts is going to make these factor trees a lot easier. But moving on, I know that we can factor 9 into 3 times 3. 3 and 3 are prime, so we are done there. Then factoring 8, I can factor 8 into 2 times 4. 2 is prime, so now we just have to factor 4 into 2 times 2. And again, 2 is prime, so now we are done. So the prime factorization of 72 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Remember, this comes from the three 2s that we have and the two 3s. So now the fun part is using these prime factorizations to find the greatest common factor. And in order to do that, all you have to do is multiply the common factors together. So what factors are common to these two factorizations? They have one two in common, they have two twos in common, they have three twos in common, and that is all they have in common. So you take what they have in common, which are three twos in this case, and multiply them all together. So that's two, times 2 times 2, the product of the common prime factors. This is equal to 8. So the greatest common factor is 8. So going back up to our little formula here, my age is equal to 2 plus 2 times the greatest common factor of 40 and 72, that's 2 times 8. So this is equal to 2 plus 2 times 8 is 16, so this is equal to 18. 18 is our answer. With problems like these, you really have to pay close attention to the language that is hiding the math. Like, two years older than means two plus. If it had said two years less than, we would have taken two away from this number here. Or if it had said half the greatest common factor, then instead of multiplying by two, we would have multiplied by one half. With that said, let's move on to our second problem. 
Carol has 34 potatoes to plant and 51 tomatoes to plant. She's going to plant in rows and wants the same number of potatoes and tomatoes in each row. So what is the greatest number of rows that she can plant? So we've got two numbers here, 34 potatoes. I'll write that out. And we have 51 tomatoes, which I will write in red. 51 tomatoes. Now, whatever number of rows Carol ends up planting these potatoes and tomatoes in, she wants the 34 potatoes to be divided evenly in that number of rows, and she wants the 51 tomatoes to be divided evenly in that number of rows. So the greatest number of rows that she can plant is going to be the greatest number that divides 34 and 51, which is just the greatest common factor. So, of course, we are looking for the greatest common factor. To do that, we'll get straight back to our factor trees. I know that 34 is even, so we can factor this into 2 times 17. And just like that, we're done because 2 and 17 are both prime. That was easy. Moving on to the tomatoes. 51 tomatoes, what can we factor this into? Well, if we add the digits of 51 together, that's 5 plus 1, which is 6. 6 is divisible by 3, which means that 51 is divisible by 3. So I know I can factor this into 3 times something, but 3 times what equals 51? Well, let me write out the long division for you. We have 51 divided by 3. 3 goes into 5 once, so we subtract the 3. We're left with 21. 3 goes into 21 7 times, so subtract 21. We're left with 0, and we have that 51 divided by 3 is equal to 17. So we can factor 51 into 3 times 17. Again, both of these numbers are prime, so we are done. So we factored 34 into 2 times 17, and we factored 51 into 3 times 17. Again, the greatest common factor is going to be the product of all of the common prime factors. The common prime factors are just 17. That's the only one. So all we have is 17. 17 is the greatest common factor between 34 and 51. So what is the greatest number of rows that Carol can plant? Well, that would be 17 rows. Each row is going to have two potatoes, and each row is going to have three tomatoes. Very nice. On to our final problem. So Devin is taking a group of students on a field trip. Hey, I know a guy named Devin. Great guy. So Devin's got 78 apples, and he's got 117 pretzels. He wants to divide this food into snack bags with equal contents. So what is the greatest number of snack bags that he can make? This is just like the problem that we just did. We've even got similar color objects here. I'll write it out. We've got 78 apples, and we've got monstrous 117 pretzels. So we're using the same thought process here. Devin is dividing these 78 apples into some number of snack bags, and he's dividing these 117 pretzels evenly into some number of snack bags. So the greatest number of snack bags that he can make is going to be the greatest number that divides both 78 and 117, which is just the greatest common factor. So again, we're looking for the greatest common factor, so we'll use our factor trees. So let's get right down to business. I know that 78 is even. I can factor it into 2 multiplied by 39. Now if we add the digits of 39, 3 plus 9 is 12. 12 is divisible by 3, which means that 39 is divisible by 3. So I can factor 39 into 3 times something. 3 times what is equal to 39? Well, I know that's going to be 13 because 3 times 10 is 30 plus 3 times 3 is 39. So now we have finished breaking 78 down into primes. Let me write out this factorization. We factored 78 into 2 times 3 times 13. Now on to the pretzels. So we've got 117. That looks kind of nasty. Let's try adding up the digits. 7 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 9. 9 is divisible by 3, so 117 is divisible by 3. So I know that I can factor 117 into 3 times something, but 3 times what is equal to 117? Well, again, let's write out this long division. We've got 117 divided by 3. 3 goes into 11 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9, so we subtract that. We're left with 27. 3 goes into 27 9 times, so we subtract 27, we're left with 0, and we see that 117 divided by 3 is 39. 
So we can factor 117 into 3 times 39. And let me get this long division out of our way. We can actually just shrink it a little bit and put it over here. Since 3 is prime, all we have left to do is factor 39. We already did that over here. We'll do the same thing over here. 39 gets factored into 3 times 13. Again, 3 and 13 are prime, so we are done. We factored 117 into 3 times 3 times 13. Now finally, what are the common prime factors between these two prime factorizations? Well, that would be 3 and 13. Those are the only common factors. So the greatest common factor is going to be 3 times 13, which of course is our good friend 39. So going back to the question, what's the greatest number of snack bags that Devin can make? That would be 39 snack bags. And how it will work is that each bag is going to contain two apples and each bag is going to contain three pretzels. And I must say that's a pretty disappointing snack bag to only have three pretzels, but pretzels stink anyway, so it doesn't really matter. In any event, those are three fantastic greatest common factor word problems. I hope this video helped you understand the processes involved in solving these problems. I think two of the most important things to keep in mind are reading the questions very carefully, because you're not always going to get a similar set of questions together like we did in this video. So you want to make sure you know exactly what they're asking you for. Secondly, it's going to help you out a lot to get good at identifying factors. So make sure you know your multiplication facts, know your divisibility rules, and practice that long division if you're a little bit rusty. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. I can hear your voice from all the way up here, dear. Won't you please come to me? You live it up here, dear. There's a light where I float that erases all black. It makes every